Hello, I welcome you in this uh, lab class of the solid state joining technologies. Uh, in this uh, class, basically, we will be talking about the diffusion molding, its principles, its different methods which are used for improving the productivity of the diffusion bonding and uh, the case study based on the joining of the similar and dissimilar metals using diffusion bonding apart from the demonstration of the setup requirement and the diffusion bonding process uh, so here if we go the objective here is to demonstrate the diffusion bonding talk about the working principle of the diffusion bonding and also to study the diffusion bonding parameters effect like the time the bonding time temperature uh, maximum pressure which is applied during the diffusion bonding and the effect of pressure pulsation on joint characteristics like the joint interface the microstructure and mechanical properties and uh, then uh, investigate uh, the effect of these parameters on mechanical properties considering the soundness and uh, the joint interface characteristics especially with regard to the discontinuities and uh, the microstructural aspect uh, so here you know the diffusion bonding uh, is uh, one of the solid state joining process and uh, for that uh, the prerequisite is to have very good smooth surfaces uh, so that uh, there is a good uh, metallic uh, contact between the, the components to be joined especially at the interface requirement is uh, like that to facilitate the diffusion uh, we have to apply the high temperature enough for long time so uh, these two are the like say barriers or very productive diffusion bonding because it takes a lot of time to smoothen the surfaces uh, to be um, uh, joined by diffusion bonding and uh, it takes long to uh, develop the diffusion bond through the diffusion across the interface so you know for uh, smoothening the surfaces of the components we have to follow like uh, the machining followed by grinding and uh, polishing so all these things take a lot of time so the surface preparation uh, of the components to be joined by diffusion bonding is crucial and we may need uh, the, the, the surface roughness say less than uh, one uh, micrometer r a value okay uh, on the other hand uh, the grain refinement so the uh, to in order to reduce the time being taken uh, for the diffusion at a high temperature to facilitate the diffusion bond these are some of the approaches which can help in like the grain refinement helps to improve the diffusion channels to facilitate the diffusion and accelerate the diffusion likewise uh, the plastic deformation also helps in the grain refinement as well as increasing the diffusion channels and uh, improving the metallic intimacy if this is uh, happening at uh, the interface uh, due to the pressure pulsation or the higher load and the likewise the use of the soft uh, thin uh, films uh, of the compatible metals also helps in improving the metallic intimacy as well as improving the metallic uh, compatibility between the different metals which are uh, being joined so uh, so if, if we have to uh, reduce the diffusion bonding time uh, if time for development of the diffusion bond then we need to work on both aspects like if we can develop the diffusion bonds of the just machine components where we don't need much of the grinding or the polishing likewise if we can accelerate the diffusion bonding through the suitable localized surface layer deformation or the grain refinement or use of the interlayer so these are the some of the approaches uh, uh, some of the things which need to be keep, kept in mind for uh, cutting down the diffusion bonding time as well as uh, improving the productivity
uh, diffusion bonds are developed in the four stages initially when the two components to be joined are brought in contact with each other uh, there is an initial contact and that is very localized here and there and gradually under the pressure at a high temperature all the peaks and valleys at the interface they get collapsed and uh, the metallic intimacy improves and that in turn results in the increased uh, the metallic contact and metallic intimacy between the two components uh, to be joined and this in turn facilitates the, the diffusion across the interface or improved diffusion across the interface the continued diffusion across the interface leads to the disappearance of these voids voids will be getting localized uh, that will be facilitated through the diffusion and then the continued diffusion will be leading to the complete uh, disappearance of the interface here in this uh, third diagram we can see this diagram we can see that the interface is present here and there uh, along with the voids and thereafter in the next stage if you see um, the, the the voids are very localized here and there so this uh, is uh, facilitated through the volumetric uh, diffusion so these are the different stages through which a diffusion bond is uh, developed Dear students, in this uh, practical demonstration, we will see the diffusion bonding and uh, for the diffusion bonding, uh, you know, we need uh, the vacuum, we need the controlled temperature and pressure application, uh, which is applied on the smooth polished surfaces. So you know that this is uh, uh, one type of the solid state joining where there is no fusion of the component to be joined. Well, in some cases, we can put the interlayer between the two components to be joined. So, at a given temperature, it, through the metallurgical reactions, the interlayer melts and leads to the little amount of the molten metal. So, in order to facilitate the diffusion bonding, in order to realize the diffusion bond joints, what is important? This uh, diffusion vacuum chamber. Uh, so, what we do here the, in this chamber uh, we create the desired high temperature we desired vacuum and the components to be joined are kept under pressure so since this is a 10 ton vacuum hot press so this uh, temperature of the vacuum chamber can be increased up to 1200 degree centigrade and the vacuum as low as 10 to the power minus 5 torque can be realized while the pressure uh, or the load for applying the desired pressure can go as long as much as the 10 tons. Uh, we have worked up to like say 20 MPa, 40 MPa kind of the pressure in order to have the uh, diffusion bonds. Uh, so since this is a very big system which involves controlled application of the vacuum, pressure and temperature and uh, additionally this also has the uh, capacity to apply the pulsing load so uh, that is realized through the servo control system okay so here uh, you see there are uh, four main components in this uh, the diffusion bonding system which is performed using this 10 ton vacuum hot press uh, one is control panel which is used to set the desired vacuum temperature and load to be applied or pulsating load to be uh, realize it during the diffusion bonding all that can be controlled uh, this is the you can say that uh, the main system where we apply the uh, load we realize the desired vacuum and desired high temperature in the chamber which uh, is having the table working table of size 150 by 150 so very large size samples also can be placed and uh, they can be used for the diffusion bonding apart from this there is a chiller also which is uh, which is used to keep the uh, the different components of the steel within the safe temperature limits so you know that uh, in the diffusion bonding there are there are three uh, important parameters namely temperature the pressure and the time for which diffusion bonding is to be done and all those things can be set using the control panel uh, 
we'll be uh, showing the different uh, uh, inside details of the vacuum chamber where in uh, it will be shown how to place the samples and uh, how to how the load is applied with the help of ram inside and then um, once the desired uh, the parameters are realized uh, during the diffusion bonding after holding a certain uh, time of say 30 minute or 60 minute as per the case we get the desired diffusion bond Today I am going to demonstrate an independent bonding of aluminum and stainless steel, 316 here. So if you see that these are the two materials, one is the copper, another one is stainless steel, 316L. So in this first time let us explain about the machine, what are the components of the machine and then we will discuss about the importance of this stainless steel and copper. First consider here there is a two uh, first main component is control panel, another one is diffusion chamber, next this is a transformer, another one is chiller. Chiller. These are the four main components. In the diffusion chamber, there is a different components are there. This is the heater and there is a ram here. The ram is applies the compression force here and the remaining part, uh, this portion I will explain in the during the next coming 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 portion okay let us start the first the diffusion bonding the diffusion bonding is uh, mainly used for uh, aerospace and nuclear applications these components are very very uh, very good solid state joining process compared to advantages over the other joining process if you see this one joining process uh, in this one then we have to control the required temperature as well as pressure this required temperature and pressure will be controlled by using the this setup. This is a heater here. These two are heater. So and the, when this is the ram. This is the ram will apply the force. The plastic deformation will be takes place by applying the compression load here. By compression load. So when you are consider here, uh, the when when it is metal is heated at a higher temperature, there is a chances of uh, oxidation. That oxidation can be avoided if you create a vacuum. So for that purpose, we create a vacuum here. So this chamber completely fill, uh, fill with a vacuum. So when you close the door and when you start the machine, we have to set the process for the vacuum preparation. In the vacuum preparation, uh, first uh, we'll have fixed these two samples here and then I set the load here. The load uh, we can adjust from using the so we can uh, set the load uh, accordingly. So now for the parameters, I uh, will explain this one. If you consider uh, diffusion bonding, uh, this is a cycle. In this cycle, there is a one bonding temperature or bonding pressure versus time. So here, here it is with a, without pulsation. In this particular uh, thing, we are uh, heating the sample with a certain rate and it is uh, holding at a particular temperature and then we will start uh, when it is uh, after the operation completed the, the bond is taking place we will remove this one uh, will slowly cool by using the chiller by using the chiller so when you consider the pressure also this is the pressure diagram and the bonding pressure will be maintained through constant and then it, it will be decreases so the both are uh, uh, by axis bonding temperature and bonding pressure are on y axis this is the uh, setting para set up uh, set up the parameters so for performing the diffusion bonding so stainless steel and copper we are considering the pressure 6 megapascals temperature 875 temperature is generally will use to control a 0.5 to 0.7 melting point of the temperature so uh, based on these two we will consider the lowest one which over there that is a 0.5 to 0.7 uh, uh, tm melting temperature so bonding time, it, this is also one of the important parameter for the uh, controlling the diffusion of the atoms. The diffusion the bonding is taking place due to the atoms uh, uh, diffusing from one, one uh, co higher concentration to lower concentration. In this one, this bonding time will give you the bonding uh, correct bonding uh, between the two materials. With the selection of the parameter also, this one bonding time is also important here. So we are considering, this is the S1, S2, S3, S4, if you consider this is the S1 diagram, 
uh, heating diagram sorry uh, you can show this one into s1 here in heating s1 and uh, s2 and s3 here s4 is here so s1 is heating temperature s2 s3 is holding temperature s4 is for uh, unloading while unloading or cooling cooling this is heating with a what rate we are heating at what rate we are cooling s4 s2 s3 why i am taking two parameters here s here s2 will becomes if you are going for any pulsation now i am not uh, uh, doing applying the pulsation here s3 is for holding without any pulsation so this pulsation will gives the <coughs> if any materials are considered uh, oxide layer is there so to remove the oxide layer we required a pulsation that pulsation based on the materials to go for uh, like aluminum and magnesium it requires the pulsation so certain materials is not required the pulsation period so uh, we'll perform basic operation now is uh, uh, with a stainless steel and copper we are not going for the pulsation here so these parameters uh, we need to set the in a control panel in a control panel so before that uh, first uh, in a load cell there is a it is showing uh, if you are consider here the load how much load we have to apply here it is uh, 300 kgf kilogram force so for that purpose we have to set the sample is loaded and first step is to we have to adjust the load accordingly 300 so it is gone to 3 396 so we'll reduce it now is the the load is set in, set to the 300 kgf now we can start the for the uh, first will close the chamber sample is loaded and after that ram is uh, touched here and set the load here load is 300 kgf then we'll close this chamber and ensure that uh, without any any gap otherwise the vacuum creation problem will start so we have to apply the grease here here the thermocouple and i have already applied the grease then i am closing the door After closing the door, we'll uh, first we'll create a vacuum here, basic vacuum. In terms of uh, megawatts, uh, we'll go for megawatts. First, uh, select in a manual mode, and then switch off the gas off. Then start manually. Then rotary pump on. Before ensure that it should be tight, properly tight. the rotary pump on first step is rotary pump on so we need to create a vacuum for that purpose there is a different pumps used here one is rotary pump another one diffusion pump the diffusion pump is for i vacuum this is for only for a basic vacuum requirement the rotary pump is connected and you can see that here there is a two gauges one apgx Active Pirani gauge, another one is WRG, wide range gauge. This should be in 10 to the power of minus 2 or 10 to the power of minus 1 bar. We'll wait for some time. It is reached to uh, 9.7 into 10 to the power of minus 2 megawatts and WRG 6.2 into 10 to the power of minus 2 megawatts, millibars. So then it is uh, we can stop the rotary pump off. Then you can. Off here, and then you can start the set the parameters in auto mode. In auto mode, you have to consider here in that there is a temperature controller. Another one is Siemens control panel. We are setting these parameters. What are the times different parameters in bonding temperature? Uh, these parameters S1, S2, S3, S4. There is a four parameters uh, we'll set here. that uh, 59 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes 5 minutes in the both uh, temperature controller as well as uh, in siemens panel so first uh, we'll set it in the we'll first put it in the auto mode 
then we will press this one so duration first segment 1, one uh, 59 minutes segment 2 5 minutes segment 3 30 minutes segment 4 45 minutes segment 5 we have to set these parameters then same parameters you have to enter here in this parameter first uh, press F2 press F5 then go to F2 here then uh, go to F5 next then go to F5 next F5 next so here eater of uh, display time that should be uh, 8340 is already set this parameter then go to F5 next uh, these parameters no need to change only uh, after after setting these parameters uh, go to the main menu ok then uh, you can uh, uh, RAM pulse F9 so if you are any parameter set par uh, pulse parameter is there you can go for this one otherwise uh, no need for this one uh, F2 then uh, you can uh, set the parameters uh, only these two parameters are important one is uh, this uh, setting times another one is load uh, it is ram pulse already it is uh, it is mentioned here uh, pulsation is not there okay then after that uh, you just uh, select uh, f6 button here auto start this uh, here it is mentioned uh, f6 auto start if you press the uh, auto start button the cycle will run completely the bonding to, the diffusion bonding cycle will completely runs and uh, after finishing uh, it will take around uh, the time is uh, 139 minutes so after 139 minutes uh, the bond will take place we'll wait uh, we'll start the machine now f6 so when you started uh, here you can see the, the when you start automatic uh, it is started from the rotary pump again and it will complete the all the cycle Whenever it is reaching the turbo, we have to switch on the turbo pump on here. After reaching turbo pump on, when it is coming to the high vacuum, we need to switch on the turbo pump. And the parameter is, so it is now, now also it is creating a vacuum only. When it is started high vacuum, it is, when it is started the heater will on. When heater on, sir, you have to switch on this uh, uh, turbo copper, temperature controller in the run mode. These are the two samples, stainless steel and copper. We have made the joint between the stainless steel and copper after diffusion bonding. This, this is the sample. If you can see the, the strength of this joint, is even it is not breaking, it is a perfect joint is made. If you are throwing in the outside also, the bond is, it will not break. So the strength of the joint is good. We can go for the testing for mechanical testing and we will get the strength of the joint. This is the made uh, after meeting the this joint we will shut down the whole setup and we will close the setup. So I will be talking about the diffusion bonding of the similar as well as the similar metals. So the diffusion bond of the similar metals say in this uh, uh, case study were developed using the lab joining and uh, the typical uh, the sample dimensions used for developing the diffusion bond of the austenitic stainless steel uh, were be used say with the overlap length of uh, say 20 mm here uh, for the given dimension a width of 20 mm and the each sample length of the 50 mm for joining the 3 mm thick seats uh, so here overlap area is 20 mm by 20 mm and uh, this is the kind of the, uh, the temperature and the pressure cycle that was applied. So initially the temperature was increased to the desired diffusion bonding uh, temperature that it was kept in mind, uh, kept constant and uh, when the temperature reaches the desired set temperature of say uh, 850 or 875 or 900 
like that we start giving the pressure pulsation so this is the pressure pressure is pulsated uh, like this it's about a half of the uh, uh, the maximum pressure so we can increase the pressure magnitude maximum pressure magnitude and thereafter uh, uh, the pressure can be pulsated so there are two types of these studies where constant pressure is applied or the pressure pulsation is applied and how many pulses are being applied based on that we can also do a study there is like 5 pulses 10 pulses 20 pulses like that an effect of that can also be studied as far as the impulse pressure assisted diffusion bonding is concerned so once this pulsing is over then we keep the pressure constant as well as uh, as per the requirement the diffusion uh, bonding time thereafter we will try to see that it is kept uh, constant and then we gradually keep on increasing uh, so this is showing the schematic of pressure pulsation for uh, the diffusion bonding pressure pulsation is expected to uh, assist in the uh, localized interfacial surface layer deformation by deforming the surface properties um, during the pressure pulsation as and this kind of the localized pre pressure uh, pulsation will be leading to the grain refinement at the interface due to the plastic deformation these are the typical samples which were developed by the diffusion bonding and the corresponding the joint uh, section is also shown using these three uh, using this uh, photograph uh, if we see the uh, the macro as well as the microstructural aspects of the diffusion bond developed at the different uh, temperatures say 850, 900 and 950 degree centigrade and then what we can see uh, this is osmotic stainless steel diffusion bond uh, two sides of the base metal and here we can see the typical joint interface line is, is still visible and even some unwanted regions also can be seen uh, at 850 degrees centigrade if we go for further higher temperature still we can see few microvoids here and there uh, and these lines in optical as well as the same micrographs can be clearly seen so when we uh, uh, increase the temperature further at 950 de 950 degrees centigrade then what we'll notice that the interface line has been almost vanished and uh, you see uh, the, the microvites if they are there they are very thin and very localized here and there so it is important that the unbonded area and uh, the size and the proportion of these microvites is characterized carefully uh, to see the way by which uh, the proportion of this unbonded region is changing as a function of temperature. Uh, as I said, interlayers help in reducing the these voids as well as uh, improving the metallic metallic intimacy. So this is what uh, we can see that at low magnification at 200 x, uh, uh, the interface the interlayer is presented the interface and these are the two sides of the base metal this is a similar uh, metal joining just to demonstrate how does it look like uh, when the interlayer is uh, used okay so um, if we see uh, uh, interfacial uh, um, uh, macroscopic uh, study and the microstructural uh, microscopic uh, aspect of the interface if that has to be characterized then we see like at the interface is of particular length and we notice the voids of certain sizes so we try to quantify the length of all these voids and for a given entire length uh, which is being investigated or studied so this uh, sum of all these um, voids like say l1 l2 l3 as evident like the voids are present at the interface for a given length so uh, the total length which is being investigated investigated that has to be used and uh, what is the proportion or the, what is the wide length in total that is used to see the the uh, interface bonding ratio what is the percentage uh, 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 length uh, of the interface which has been uh, bonded 
okay so the total length minus the void length divided by total length this gives us the interface bonding ratio interface bonding ratio is say the say so the percentage of the bond uh, interface bonding ratio is uh, 60 at low temperature and uh, this will be increasing uh, uh, this will be increasing with the increase of the temperature say from 850 to 900 when the temperature is increased say it increased to 70 percent and then it went up to even 90 percent with a further increase of the uh, bonding temperature so basically increasing the bonding temperature increasing the interfacial bonding reducing the void percentage okay that's how uh, we can do the interfacial analysis so if we see further the, the across the interface if we check the hardness distribution say for the uh, the steel which was joined so say increasing one simple thing that we can check here is that increasing the bonding temperature in from 800 to 900 the 900 to 950 is it is increase decreasing the micro hardness across the uh, so uh, the the micro hardness uh, of the joint uh, is in general is getting reduced so we can say that the joint is getting weakened with the increase of the bonding temperature and that may be due to the uh, like say the coarsening of the grains so not just the interface uh, is getting uh, 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 interface bonding ratio is increasing but at the same time the base metal strength or the joint hardness as a whole is also coming down that is why we try to choose the bonding temperature such that you get the good interface bonding ratio at the same time the base metal strength is not compromised uh, significantly due to the bonding uh, high bonding temperature okay uh, that's what will be reflecting in the behavior of the diffusion bonds so let's see that when the bonding temperature is increased from 850 to 950 uh, degree centigrade we notice that there is an increase of uh, the strength uh, continuous increase of strength as well as the continuous increase of the uh, elongation so increasing the bonding ratio is helping to increase the strength as well as the ductility both okay that's what can be seen very clearly maximum shear load is increasing uh, say at 50 at 850 it is uh, around say 25 and this uh, with the increase of the bonding temperature it is increased to 30 and then to 35 okay so increasing the bonding temperature is increasing the interface bonding ratio which is leading to the improved the joint strength okay so it is good from both the ductility as well as the joint strength point of view so uh, uh, the same uh, the another way to see that the how strength and ductility are helping to improve the failure energy so from the uh, stress strain diagram if we use the area under the curve so using that area if we calculate the failure energy at 850 uh, degree centigrade it is very low and it uh, gets improved with the increase of the bonding temperature and there is a significant increase in the bonding temperature at 950 degree centigrade so the failure energy requirement of the energy to cause the failure under the tensile loading it also improves significantly with the increase of the bonding temperature we will take up the case of the dissimilar metal where one austenitic stainless steel is being joined with the copper metal so here let's say these are the different samples developed using the different set of the temperatures so austenitic stainless steel and the copper developed at say 850 degree centigrade for diffusion bonding time of the 30 minutes and the maximum pressure of the 4 mpa so the temp just pressure is increased to so say here the maximum pressure is increased from 4 mpa to 6 mpa and then 10 mpa what we notice that there is a bulging of the copper 
with the increase of the pressure at this temperature uh, similarly so so uh, the 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 joint remains uh, the intact uh, use uh, maximum pressure that it can handle is say at 875 it is the 6 uh, mpa that pressure it can handle very effectively without getting in the uh, deformed so that was chosen for further study so 8 75 degrees centigrade 30 minute diffusion bonding time and uh, say 6 mpa the the maximum pressure that was applied and thereafter we changed the we applied the pulses so our maximum pressure is say 6 mpa then it was subjected to the pulsation like this so almost 50 percent of the maximum pressure so 6 MPa, 3 MPa, 6 MPa, 3 MPa. Like this, the pressure pulsation, 10 number of pulses, 20 number of the pulses and 30 pulses were given. And then effect of all these was uh, investigated on the joint uh, interface characteristics. So here, the samples developed for uh, uh, of the dissimilar uh, metals of copper and nostrum stainless steels were also prepared. Uh, for uh, mm, uh, tensile test so this is showing the typical the tensile sample uh, as per the ASTM E8 standard and thereafter the, the hardness and the tensile tests were performed so what it shows that when we change the different uh, the pressure maximum pressure is changed the hardness distribution is not much affected uh, except that uh, there will be some uh, near the interface uh, there is a some kind of the work hardening especially in the copper side is taking place so austenitic stainless steel this side is the austenitic stainless steel this side is the copper there is a great difference in the properties of the two metals that's why we can see the large uh, variation and uh, here it shows the sloping line shows the the variation in the hardness distribution across the interface okay now if we see the the joint uh, ass and the copper joint uh, and then how the properties are getting affected with the change of the maximum pressure so when the pressure is increased from 4 to 6 and then 6 to 10 mpa then we notice that by and large the the maximum strength remains constant because in all these cases our the failure is taking place from the the base metal so it is if it is the interfacial failure then we have to worry about if it is the uh, the base metal then we will we can safely assume that our joint is stronger than the the base metals and our joint efficiency is greater than 100 percent okay so now if we check uh, this uh, uh, what we call it as a like effect of the pulsation so 10 pulses 20 pulses and 30 pulses only in this case in all these cases our failure is occurring from the base metal except in one case here failure is occurring from the interface so in this case if you want to determine the joint uh, efficiency then 178 divided by the say base metal strength is around 222 so this will be leading to that's the v metal that we consider for this kind of joint efficiency calculation in case of the the similar metal so 178 divided by 222 kind of thing this will give us the the percentage of the joint efficiency okay so so this is how uh, this what we have seen like uh, uh, the diffusion bonds how to analyze investigate and study the effect of the different parameters related to the diffusion bonding on the interfacial characteristics on the um, mechanical properties and the microstructural aspects so what now we can conclude uh, here we have to see that how the different parameters of the diffusion bonding are optimized and established and what are the precautions we should keep in mind and follow the particular procedure for developing the diffusion bond and thereafter we have to see that uh, uh, study and analyze the observations and conclude accordingly with respect to the effect of diffusion bonding parameters these may be in terms of diffusion bonding temperature time maximum pressure pressure pulsation or the, even in the interfacial layer layer thickness is the type of the interface metal so there are multiple possibilities 
and their effect is investigated on the joint interface characteristics with regard to the soundness then microstructural variation uh, and then mechanical properties say hardness distribution or the tensile properties or any other properties which is of our interest.